Hey guys, how's it going? This clip is from Children's Defense on YouTube, and it's the Children's Defense Fund people. And I think that uh, what they what they do is they use a name that's very benign, like Children's Defense, and then suck people in to give them money. But really, what they're here to do is take away your rights. And I'll show you what I mean. Trayvon, and as the judge said in his ruling, that he is the minor here. He is the child. He made that quite clear. That's probably one of the reasons that he was kicked off the case. Remember, the judges, the three judges that decided the case, that decided he was biased, those, you know, the judges suggested that not just one of the things that he said, but because of many things all taken into account, come across as very, very biased, and that it would definitely be unfair to George to have a judge like that. So just so long as we remember that, and and he knew that this judge was removed when he's saying that, so I don't know why he would even bring up this judge. If I were him, I would shut up about the biased judge because everything that's happened in this case so far obviously was unfair because that judge is removed. So everything that's happened should be removed and moved backwards, and I'm sure it will. Uh, in his ruling about the bond of George Zimmerman, and we must always remember that, that Trayvon was a teenager, considered a minor, and that he was somebody. A teenager and a minor that was the most dangerous age group. These 17-year-olds are the ones, you know, 16, 17, 18-year-olds are the ones that are killing each other in the streets. If you look at the statistics in places like Chicago, where Obama was leading these young people, you'll see that they, they've they already killed several hundred uh, among themselves. They're just killing themselves left and right. And these people are having a hard time about it. But the problem is they're not taking care of business. They're not watching their kids. You know, if your kids are killing each other, then maybe if you kept your kids in, they wouldn't get killed. I know my kids didn't get killed. He was somebody's baby. He was Sabrina Fulton's baby. Yeah, and he was George Zimmerman's attacker. He was the guy that was on top of George, banging his head and breaking his nose and trying to suffocate him and going for his gun. All these things that make Trevon the aggressor, the attacker, and the one that was in a position where George had every right to defend his life. And that's why the police didn't arrest him. They never did. It took the state to step in. George didn't get arrested by the police. The DA's office didn't arrest him. They had passed it. They, that's what upset these people so, month, so much. All this time went by. They're like, no arrest. Well, it's, what's going to happen when George gets off and walks away? What are they going to do? They're going to freak out. It won't bring Trayvon back, but hopefully these type of conferences will prevent another Trayvon Martin incident. It's bringing awareness to things like stand your ground and your guns. And That's right. More people today are arming themselves than ever before. Before Trayvon, we had 7,000 people every month get uh, carry permits so that they could carry guns on their person everywhere they went. And now we have 12,000, so that's a 5,000 increase, monthly increase. So that would, I would say, definitely is informing people of their Second Amendment rights and that it's not safe out there, that there are a lot of 17-year-olds that would be willing to kill you kill you because you followed them or they they presume that you followed them or that they presume that you were reaching for something that was unsafe when they came out of the darkness and came after you after they disappeared for minutes and then came back hmm. 
just to let people know that we are informed and that the, the youth are informed and they are, they are watching. And <clears throat> they're not informed, not properly informed, or they wouldn't have put themselves in this position. We've got a lot of youth that are informed. My kids are informed. A lot of, a lot of the youth are becoming more informed because we have the Internet. People question everything now. My kid Googles it. He doesn't. He, if he doesn't believe what somebody says, he'll go and look it up at 15 other sources and verify it. And he won't just take the first source's word for it just because it's on the Internet. That's the proper way to be. Don't just believe everything you're told. But this isn't what's happening with the youth on, on Trevon's side. These people are emotional, and they're, they're taking the word of the, what you hear on the TV. And this, this was a great eye-opener for about half the people in this country, people who, who are now able to look at the facts and say, you know what, this wasn't the case that the TV made it out to be. And they had the facts. So now the, those people, a big chunk of the people, no longer have faith in the news. You just, they just lost it that quickly. So to me, see, I knew it before. I remember I was a Ron Paul supporter this time around, so I got a real big dose of blackout and everything else that they did to him. So it's it's really this is this is easy for me. But a lot of these people are like going, Wow, how did this happen? Our media is so corrupt and so out of control. And how can so many people be so quickly and easily deceived? And then you got to look at these people. I'm, I'm guessing the lady on the right is in education. She just looks like an ed, like somebody who's in education. So, you know, and a lot of these people that are in that kind of defense, that children's defense thing, they they like to meld the minds of the youth, and that's what they do. They get into education, and that's why we have to be so diligent and watch what's taught our children, make sure whatever our children are, learn that they bring their books home and they you read it you look at it don't just assume that the that the teachers are teaching the right things don't just assume that your kids are learning about their heritage and that they're learning about their rights because that they aren't if you depend if you depend on the schools to teach your children what their rights are your kids will have no rights and that's what the dumbing down of america is about you only have the rights that you know you have. So if you don't know you have a right, you don't have it. So over a period of time, they can educate out that knowledge. And they just find the people that are educating their own children and say, those are crazy people because they teach their kids that they're allowed to have guns. It matters. It matters to them. It's about their future. And I Yeah, it matters to all of my kids, to all the kids. Of course it does. They want to have their rights, but this lady does not want them to have their rights. I just want to say thank you personally to Ms. Edelman. We lose eight children every day to gun violence in this country. That's one every three hours. And well, I believe, what is it, 2,000 people a, a day are lost to abortion every day and oh wait a minute I'm wrong with that number let me get it right yeah two million a year so you can add that up and how many people die from smoking related diseases every day I know it's over a thousand people every day so if you get if you're talking about how many people die from a legal substance that people are just puffing away on and that's no problem for these people. And those ki a lot of kids that are in houses that are smoking houses, especially those poor families that have, you know, that's one of the biggest things that the only pleasure they get is they're, they're smoking and they're drinking. And those kids are exposed to that. But do you hear anything about that? Do you hear about the kids that are dying from, from childhood diabetes because they're being fed the wrong kinds of foods? No. But why wouldn't the Children's Defense Fund focus on that and be talking to the parents specifically, not to me, 
My kids are already raised. I already taught my kids right. My kids are healthy and smart and they do the right things and they're not making they're not they're not causing trouble to society. They're making society better. Now why doesn't she teach these kids all these things? Teach them what they need, the good things, instead of coming to me and saying, "You need to give up your rights because these kids can't can't control themselves." No, I don't think so. That ain't happening. The Children's Defense Fund for the last 20 years has been doing an annual child and gun violence report. And the most recent data, we lost more children. We usually lose about an average of 3,000 children a year to gun violence. We lose more children in one year to gun violence than we have lost in American battle casualties in Afghanistan and in Iraq. What is the matter with us? that we're not going to stop the killing of children. We need to turn the tragedy in Aurora, we need to turn the, say, the children who die from guns to really begin to come to our senses. We don't need armed militia. We don't need assault weapons. Excuse me? I could have sworn she said we don't need militias and assault weapons. That would be treason because if, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, the fact is that we have a Second Amendment, and that is part of our Constitution. And, you know, going against the Constitution is like treason or something, isn't it? And I don't, I don't know. That's pretty bad, isn't it? Like, isn't there some sort of, isn't there some sort of punishment for treason? Something? I don't know. Like, you know, like a slap on the wrist or something? I don't know. You guys tell me. We've got 1.3 million people in our armed services and in the police departments in addition to protect the people of this country. Um, the, the, I didn't know that the military was going to go to the theater and protect people from the crazy guy. I didn't know that. That's, that's new. Well, check that out. I didn't know that the military could even do any law enforcement in the entire country. I thought that they were just supposed to protect the borders and defend our our country from external threats. Seems like that was part of the deal. The and the police deal, well, you know what happened there. Or you younger guys you probably don't remember, but in the nineties, Clinton, much like Obama with their stimulus packages, came in and said, You know what, let's hire a whole bunch of new cops all over the country. And I think it was, you know, he wanted a thousand new cops on the street or something like that. And he was making, he made this big number. Well, we got new cops. The problem was when the stimulus money ran out, those cops lost their jobs because the people didn't have the money. And you can't squeeze the money out of the people when they refuse. So, you know, it was a good, good idea doesn't work. And this is what Obama wants to do. He likes these things where... They give you a carrot, and they say, look, we're, we're creating jobs. And they do. They create jobs. So under Clinton, it looked like we were creating all these jobs. Look at all these new cops on the street. Look at all these new uh, positions in the government. You know, lots of new jobs. The problem was they were temporary. So once Clinton got out of office, those jobs fell apart. They went away. I don't think they should be allowed to pad their numbers by using stimulus dollars. That's that's using a credit card, using our great-grandchildren's credit card. That's what they're doing. They're reaching into the great-great-grandkids and saying, Hey, guys, sorry, we're going to have to borrow a little bit out of your credit card. We don't need um, assault weapons everywhere. And what a difference a gun makes. How many people, if we didn't have assault weapons and didn't have these Glocks, would have been killed in Aurora? How? I tell you, if, if everybody would have had a weapon up in that stand, or half of them, or even eight or ten of them would have had a weapon, there would have been a lot less killed. I can tell you that right now. That guy would have been taken down real quick. And the fact that he had on body armor, that just proves carry permits are insufficient. The right to carry a pistol is just not sufficient. We need to be able to, to strap on an AK-47 if we damn well please. That's part of the right to bear arms. 
And if I'm if I'm not mistaken, the our Supreme Court has just ruled recently that it is an individual right. It's absolutely individual, so that won't be in question. We have the individual right to keep and bear arms, and that cannot be infringed, period. So if I want to carry my AK anywhere I want, the Constitution says I can. And the Supreme Court has said it's, it's an individual right, which means that they will support me right up to the end. If I, if I want to carry my, my assault rifle, I, I will. And that's under the Constitution. It's just like my right to freedom of speech. You're not going to come and arrest me because I'm standing on a street corner saying something you don't like. How much longer is it going to take us to stand up and to have sensible gun control? When are we going to cl close those gun show loopholes? We regulate toy guns. We regulate... First of all, the we don't really have the gun show loophole. They... They always talk about this loophole as if gun shows don't have to do background checks. Well, try to buy a gun at a gun show in Florida and see if you don't get a background check. Cost you 50 bucks and you'll do it. You won't have any choice. That's the way it's done. There's no argument. There's no discussion. No one's going to sell you a gun out of a gun show. You have to abide by all those same laws and regulations as a gun shop. I don't know where they get it teddy bears in our Consumer Products, um, Consumer Products Commission. We do not regulate guns that kill tens of thousands of people in It's the most ignorant argument ever. Of course we regulate children's toys that cause choking hazards. You know, an eye fall off of a teddy bear. That's a problem. Children are dying. And the parents should know. They should are, Somebody should tell them there's a safety hazard with that toy. But when we're talking about guns, we're talking about adults. Excuse me, adults. And adults with guns, when they use the gun, are using it to kill people on purpose. So the gun is being used properly. It's not, it's not blowing up in somebody's hands. If you want to regulate the gun... That's fine. We already have that. Believe me, Smith & Wesson is well regulated. If, they, if for some reason their guns started blowing up in people's hands or blowing up in people's faces, that'd be the end of Smith & Wesson. That's not happening. What this lady's concerned with is she wants to sue Smith & Wesson for the wrongful use of a gun. Like, let's say a criminal gets hold of a Smith & Wesson and goes out and kills a little old lady. Well, that little old lady's family wants to sue somebody. So the, the, the criminal, he's got no money. But Smith & Wesson's got a bunch of money. So what are they going to do? They're going to go over there and say, hey, it was your gun. You know, that is the most ignorant thing ever. The gun did what it was intended to do. You want to hold them responsible, hold them responsible for it, for a gun doing what it's not intended to do. It's intended to fire a bullet. That's all it's intended to do. So as long as it does that, you can't hold them responsible. Just like you can't hold an automobile manufacturer responsible for the wrongful use of a car. You can't make them responsible when a guy gets behind a wheel drunk and goes and plows into a family of seven and kills them all. No, you can't hold GM responsible when a guy uses a car as a getaway car after he robbed a bank no it's not going to work so just stop it you know freedom is about responsibility we, we're not going to give up all of our freedoms so that you people don't have to be responsible so you don't have to monitor your, the actions of your children no we're not doing that we're not going to give away our rights so that you don't have to be responsible not going to happen today America every year and 3,000 children in this country every year. What is it going to take for us to stand up and to deal with these stop and frisk laws to begin to make this? Did she say stop and frisk laws? I hope you guys know what that's all about. That is, in some cities now, they've instituted a new program where the police will stop and frisk people they see 
that they think are suspicious, people they think might have a gun, people that typically would just by the way that they're dressed. They found that, you know, if you stop these guys, you know, one in five will be armed. So that's that's a pretty good odd. So if you stop all the guys that are dressed that way, one out of five, you're going to get them, maybe one out of three. I don't know what the numbers are. I'm just guessing, but I'm saying they figured it out. It obviously works or they wouldn't keep doing it. You're not going to keep risking people that are never armed. There must be a reason why they're doing it. So she doesn't like that. But these are the criminals. These are the hoodlums. These are the kids that aren't even supposed to have guns. Because remember, concealed weapons permits, at least in Florida, are limited to people that are 21 and older. You can't even have, you can't even be carrying a gun with, unless you're 21 or older. You know? So, you know, but she doesn't, she just said, she need, we need to end that. But she just said it real quickly because that was the little, the little tidbit that she sent off. It's a little secret message that they give to their people that supports their cause. Their cause is they think that these little criminals can have that little bulge in their pants. The cops shouldn't be allowed to frisk them. They shouldn't be allowed to. Listen, I agree. Personally, there should be no frisking of people without a, without evidence of a crime. That's my opinion. And, you know, and I'm surprised that she's she agrees with me on that point. But but what's weird is she wants to do away with the guns. But obviously, the only people that are going to abide by those laws are people that are law abiding, people that wouldn't be a an issue so i don't understand it it does it makes no logical sense how you can come to that conclusion thinking that if we take all the guns away from these honest people that somehow it's going to be safer that the bad guys aren't going to have access to guns of course they will maybe it'll be harder for them to get them maybe some of them won't have as many maybe they'll have to turn to axes or or baseball bats or some other gruesome tool to kill you but if their plan is to kill you, believe me, they're going to do it. The streets safe for our children to take guns out of the hands of our children, out of people who kill our children. And so I just hope that these will... Well, at least she got that right. Take the hands out of, their, out of her children, the people that are killing her children. That's right. The children are killing the children. That's the majority of the problem that we're having. And they want to stop that, but... They can't get the guns out of, or the drugs out of the hands of the children, and those are illegal. So, you know, if you can't control the drugs, how do you suppose you're going to control guns? Of course, you make drug laws. Honest, law-abiding people are not going to have those drugs, but the criminals will. So what happens? We see it. The criminals have it. So what's going to happen when you make guns illegal? Who's going to not have it? Who's going to have it? You figure it out not just be new hollow times. We want justice for Trayvon, and there should be justice, but we've got to stop these laws, which in So she, she's talking about Trayvon. She's, she looks back and sees them. Oh, yeah, this is about Trayvon. She's spending the whole time talking about guns. But she's like, oh, yeah, Trayvon. And then she says, there's got to be justice for Trayvon, but we've got to do something about these laws, this stand-your-ground laws that really bugging them. That, which is, of course, the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment, I mean, if you didn't have a, a uh, carry permit, you could just have a little card, laminated card, with the Second Amendment written on it. And when someone asks you where your carry permit is, you could whip that out and say, there you go. My right to bear arms shall not be infringed. Uh, and I, I would say having to go and get a permit is obviously an infringement. I mean... Right now, the Democrats would have a hard time disagreeing with me on that because they believe that that having to have an ID to go vote is an infringement on their right to vote. So then they should believe that I the it would be an infringement on my right to bear arms to have to go and get some sort of ID or some you know pay some outrageous amount of money and it's very expensive to get a carry permit. It's not cheap. You have to go. You have to go through the class. You have to pay the the fee, and it's not cheap. And then you have to wait for it to come in, and then you have to abide by all these extra rules that are extra constitutional rules that that are outside the Constitution. That's why a lot of guys refuse to 
actually get a carry permit because they're refusing to sign a document that gives away their rights. I tell them, don't worry about it because you can't sign away your rights. Even if you sign a document that says, I give up my all my rights, it's, it's an invalid. It's an improper document. It's not a legal document. It can't stand in a court of law. No judge would allow it. No matter what you do, you can't sign away your rights. So if some guy tries to get you to sign a document that that's giving away your rights, don't worry about it. Sign it, don't worry. It's worthless. It's a piece of toilet paper. Courage, violence, um, and we just need to move to a different place. So I hope that the people of this country will find their voice and say we ought to be able to go to the movie safe, we ought to be able to walk down the street safe, and we're not going to let three-year-olds or five-year-olds in New Orleans be killed by AK. I agree. And how can we be safe when we're going to the movies? How can we be safe? Well, certainly you're not going to have the military standing in every movie theater with AK-47s protecting us from the criminals with AK-47s, right? And you can't stop them. We've already proven that because you can't stop the other stuff, the other things that we say we're not allowing in our country that are still getting in. So if you can't stop all that stuff, then you can't protect us. There's no way you can protect us. You can't protect us with the military. You can't protect us with the police unless you have a large armament in every gathered place, everywhere we go. If I walk down the street, I need to have a cop walking beside me because, you know what, I don't have five minutes for the cop to arrive. And in many cases, especially big cities, there isn't. It's much more than five minutes. They may not even show up. Here in Tampa, they had a thing just with the uh, convention, and they had it all over the news. They said, if you need the cops, eh, you, you better plan on an hour, maybe longer. And if it's something that's not an emergency, like a, a fender bender, you know, don't call us, just exchange numbers. So you're wasting your time because they were too busy with the Republicans to concern themselves with the citizens and the people that, that pay their bills. 47s which serve no purpose in self-protection so I just hope that we will begin the healing process she said that AK 47s serve no purpose in self-protection well I beg to differ if I'm in my house and two or three guys come around and they have AK 47s the only hope I have is that I have at least an AK 47 or something that's equal an AR 15 or something that that can put out a lot of lead in a short period of time and heavy lead fast lead because believe me a 22 hunting rifle to shoot squirrels it just ain't gonna do it it's not gonna do it it's just not it's not scary enough and the bullets aren't bad enough i mean they're not gonna go through a car door not like an ak go right through your car go go through your wall that's why it's important that we're all equally armed. It's only fair. And I don't know why anybody would think that it's not fair. Why should, should Joe down the street have the AK and everybody else be at his mercy? I don't think so. Confront the epidemic of gun violence, and guns make that huge difference. I mean, if you, you couldn't have killed 32 people at Virginia Tech if you hadn't had guns. And actually, we could have stopped it if we would have, if all we had to do was allow all those people to have guns, but of course, Aurora laws wouldn't allow it. It's funny how most of these shootings happen in places where guns are, not, are restricted, like on campuses or in towns that, that restrict guns. This caliber. So we need to deal with it. This caliber. So we need to deal with it, and I hope that the good folk will begin to speak up and not have the NRA take and set our policies in this country. Our children need safety, our citizens need safety, all of us, and none of us are safe as long as... Wow. So she's mad at the NRA because they defend the Second Amendment. And any other group of people that support our Second Amendment rights. And I wonder what's going to happen... You know, if they, if they, these people are able to rip away our rights to bear arms, what's next? I know that they really, remember we had this huge thing during the 90s about the 
political correctness. And it was very close, I thought for sure, take away the right to free speech and only allow speech that is um, popular or selected speech. And little by little, I noticed that that these people, certain people that you see on TV, have become so politically correct that, I mean, really, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble by saying the wrong things. And there was a time when you could say anything you wanted and your speech was protected, especially the unpopular speech. Nowadays, you just got to be careful. Who knows what could happen? People could come hunting you down because they don't like what you say. These people think that they're doing God's service by killing you. Believe me when I tell you, this is serious stuff. So just be prepared. All of these millions, hundreds of millions of guns in place. So I hope they'll have sensible gun control. Well, the best gun control I know is using both hands. That's the best. What the, the idea that someone would restrict or in some way infringe on my rights is ab abhorrent. It makes me ill to even think it. I, I, I reject and I refuse any, any gun laws that restrict in any way my right to keep and bear arms in any way. I reject them. And if there is any such law, I don't accept it as being constitutional. So you can pass all the laws you want, but more and more people, law-abiding people like myself, are coming to the realization that a, law, a lot of laws are not constitutional. And we know now that people that followed the law just because it was a law got in a lot of trouble in Germany. So we want to make sure that we're following the Constitution because that's the thing that protects us. That's the thing that covers our butt, not these laws. If, you, if, you're, if these police that are arresting people are, are standing on the laws as their protection, they're, they're really sadly mistaken. They're going to be held responsible at some point when the people stand up and say, you know, no more. No more. We want our government back the way it's supposed to be. Not to say that we want to go back to a time where people were less informed about one thing or another. No. We've, we've grown as a people. We know more stuff. We've learned things. But one of the things we've learned is that the Bill of Rights was a great idea and that the founders were very smart men to to put it in writing, even though a lot of them argued and said we shouldn't do that because it's a God-given right, and if you put it on paper, people are going to think that it's m that the government gave us the right. And the other guy said, no, we need to codify it. It needs to be verified. These Ten Amendments are not to be amended. They cannot be removed. They can't be changed by law or any other creed. The no agreements between the UN and the Senate. Nope, none of that's going to help. You can come up with a small arms treaty and say, well, you know, we, we need to get rid of small arms worldwide to make the world safer. So all these countries are going to agree. Well, you know what? That's fine for them. But our Constitution doesn't allow that. The Constitution refuses to allow us to be de armed. So that's not going to happen. And, you know, if, if they tried, it would just be a horrible mess. It would, it would be another civil war, and we don't want that. They don't want that. Nobody wants that. I can't imagine anybody wanting that anyway. Of course, you never know. Tyrants enjoy using their power to create chaos because with chaos comes power. They get more powerful with the chaos. If, you, if people are struggling to get food, if he's got the food, he can hand them a little food, and guess what? Now he's got power. So some, the tyrant might be for it. So whenever you see something happen big in the world or some big, big bad thing happen and you think, wow, those are bad people, just remember, who's benefiting? Who's benefiting from that terrible accident or terrible tragedy that happened? Is it the people that are being uh, 
pointed at? Are they the ones that are benefiting? Or is it our government by passing, suddenly being able to pass all these new laws that they couldn't pass before? I remember this very well. In 2000, they were trying to pass the Patriot Act, and it wouldn't pass. And they kept trying, and they kept trying, and they kept trying, and they kept watering it down, and then they kept trying, and it wouldn't, they couldn't get it through. There, there was no way. The people were like, what? Are you crazy? No, we're not giving away our rights. You know, we were safe. And then 9-11 came in 2001, and suddenly everybody was jumping ship from the freedom wagon. I mean, what happened? Americans jumping ship from the freedom wagon. Crazy stuff. Anyhow, I just wanted to bring out this clip. I thought it was interesting, and and uh, we just need to be vili- diligent on our rights and make sure that we don't allow people to dumb our children down to the point they don't know what their rights are because the only rights you have are the ones you know you have. So if you really want to know what rights you have, I would suggest you find them now. Good talking.